Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today I hope I'm going to be doing a fairly fast ink and wash for you. I say that because I promise fast every time I start a painting and I never seem to deliver it. So today I hope that it won't be too long. It's not going to be too short either. Let's see how we go. Let's dive straight in and see what happens. Okay. Right, now I'm using uh, Noodler inks and pens and uh, I'm just going to go straight in. I'm not even going to worry about penciling this in first. So I'm just going to hopefully that my drawing works out and I'm just going to come. It's fairly crude and fairly sort of um, simple forms really. These are sort of sheds that are garden um, allotments near to my home and I think from that point of view they make a great subject to see all of the bits and pieces so I'm just going to draw in basically get this I hope about right and move on from there as we sort of set the next one up and a few lines like so and if I make mistakes in the drawing I'm not really overly worried it is just a sketch but I'm doing it on 300 pound uh, rough paper so that I can um, get some skips and some nice lovely sets of uh, lines, marks, a variation of marks. Just checking where I'm going with that roof line. And lots of variations basically and just to see um, how um, I can sort of use dry brush techniques, wet techniques and all these bits and pieces. There's a lots of things at the end of this. I don't even know what half of them are to be quite honest with you. Little poles that are sticking down obviously where beam poles and bits and pieces the gentleman or the lady concerned has got little pots and just going to suggest one or two of those very very quickly and they it is it's a little bit like my sketchbook um, ones that you've seen me do. Now I will say in advance that Obviously we are still in lockdown and my neighbours are at home, they're all doing their gardens and doing little bits and pieces which is fair enough, they, everyone's got to do their, run their lives as best they can. Actually that's interesting, I've just seen that, there's actually um, like a Wellington boot on there, I'm going to use that, let's put a Wellington boot on the end of that upturned post. Interesting. I didn't see it for a beginning, but there you go. It's there. Lots of little bits and pieces. Yes, as I was saying, um, sorry, even got a helicopter going over. I'm surprised really that there is actually a lot of air traffic. We normally suffer a lot here, but um, recently, of course, because of lockdown, it's been restricted. So I haven't noticed so much, but today I come out here to do some filming and there's so much going on. Anyway, <laughs> I digress, doesn't matter, let's just have some fun. I'm just doing a few forms, a few shapes and a few marks of nettles and bits and pieces, lots of growth here. Um, I think these are gladioli that are grown, I'm going to put those in, something like that and they get to a point. Let's put a couple in, let's put another set in there, one, two, lots of little flowers. Just little marks, That's, they're merely suggestions, that's all you can do. You can't actually paint each, not at this level, only little bits and pieces, just one or two marks through here, suggesting the planking on the side, broken lines, little bits and pieces in that fashion. Um, what else are we going to put in? A lot of, uh, I've come up quite high with the drawing like so because I didn't want too much up the back here. There's lots of trees and bits and pieces and I can just sort of, tap some suggestions in and one or two things like that. Um, it's pretty much dark all the way through. The whole of this area seems to be enclosed or enveloped in lots of darks and greens. I'm going to put a couple of um, trees so suggesting that there's a bit of a dark area down through there for when I come to do my drawing, uh, my painting sorry. Just one or two areas, branches, trunks coming there and what I want to try and do is add some more interest through here and I'm going to put the picture reference up for you so the it, you can see that during the course of this painting but also you'll be able to download this off of my Patreon channel for free um, and use this if it is of course to learn from 
and I'm more than happy to supply that reference. Now there are one or two areas here, and I've got to be careful because actually they've got little bottles on. It would be nice to try and preserve those um, in the painting. So whatever I do here, wash-wise, I really want to try and leave that white paper and become quite suggestive of what's going on. And lots of lovely purple flowers. I think I know what these are. Um, I can't say the name because I can't think of it, but they're very structural. And the butterflies and insects really love them. They are amazing structural. Uh, if I think of the name, I will say it, but I can't think of the top of my head. Anyway, so, right, where are we? I'm just going to carry on with this quick scribble, as it were, and uh, hopefully we can have some fun doing the painting. Now, I think um, because of these plants, and of course the uh, gladioli, we're too late for things like dafts and stuff, so I'm not going to try and put those in. There are one or two, uh, I think, Crocosmia sort of growing up through there, one or two marks. Let's just put one or two things in, and we can actually add those in. And um, maybe, yes, let's just over the back here. There seems to be some struck, more of these purple plants, these what I call butterfly plants. They love them, and there's quite a few of these growing up in this area. So I'm going to put those in and suggest that post. Now what might be, it's not in the photograph, but you know, I'm going to put a post right there, right in front of this shed, like something of that nature. So we've got a bit of something going on here. I can put a little bit of a gate there, just suggestive as that comes down through. But on here, it'd be interesting, let's just put in, if I can make it happen, suggesting that somebody's put a coat or a jacket on there, Maybe there's the sleeve, um, yeah, and let's just put in here, maybe a little smaller because there's the scale, so let's come here and let's just put in a shovel, spade that is just ready to start work. Just giving that a bit of a story, a little bit of a narrative to the whole thing. And a lot of paintings work through narrative, I will talk about that in another video. There's a little bit of white something there. I think it's a stacked up set of chairs. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to suggest something and leave that white. And put the end barge boards on the shed, which I've forgotten at the moment. And suggest that there are boards corresponding this way and down through there. Like so. And then the ones going this way. These pens are really a lot of fun to use, I tell you. Because you can... You know, be very, very expressive with them, like so. And let's suggest, I still don't know what this is at the back here. Some sort of, uh, I think it's like a, an overwintering greenhouse with a roller blind there that you can actually let it down. And, and in here it's very, very dark. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, yes, sorry, um, I was saying about these pens. I'm jumping all over the place with conversation. I do apologize. I think it's just, I'm just having fun with this. So hopefully you're enjoying it anyway. Um, right now, there are lots of lovely little plants and I'm just gonna do a few taps with the pen. Maybe let's have some, another one of those red uh, gladiolis. If I can make that look a bit gladioli-ish. And let's have another one up there. I think they're gladiolis. It could be something else, whatever they are. I'm going to put maybe a whitish one in, like so. And another one beside it. So we've got all these different things happening. And this is where the, the drawing is essential. And of course the painting, albeit essential, not as crucial as getting the drawing correct. Lots of more stuff. I've got so much going on here. But I need to make a lot of going on over here too. So let's put in, um, let's just going to suggest one or two plants in and just some forms and a lot of stuff in the foreground, like so. One or two sticks, one thing or another. Um, some other plants, let's just suggest that they are quite yellowish. Just having fun. Just passing time, 
and really and truly this is just a small piece of paper and I am I'm just having fun I mean I'm filming it but I'm talking to you but at the same time I'm just enjoying the process of creating something from nothing and just enjoying that process as I say um, can I put in I'm just going to put in another uh, bottle type thing on a post there just suggest that is gives a bit more scale as you go down and there's our bottle laying on top of our stick and that gives a nice lead in I think you got this nice sweep of line through to this coat or whatever I've painted on top of there on the post and on there as I say I put a piece in there and let's put a piece in there and then suggest that that's the return bit of a gate or a bit of something in there it doesn't really matter too much and before we finish let's just come in with some dark there's going to be a bit of dark in here which will throw these bottles out quite nicely but I also want to suggest in here that there are some beans growing quite high give that a little bit of structure this way and change the composition just ever so slightly so I'm going to come over this with a fairly light wash before I go in with some darker values and believe it or not these scribbles I hope will <laughs> indicate beans on a pole that you can't actually see the poles anymore but hopefully it will <laughs> translate I don't know must remember these bottles I don't want to lose those now I've got them in there I think they look quite nice all right and we're going to carry on one or two more before we finish this sketch and uh, start adding some color to this lots of I want to try and remember some of these beautiful little colors little violets and little reds and pinks that suggest other things going on wildflowers all over the place in this little allotment in between the uh, huge areas of green uh, trees and planting and what else we've got going on in there so I think that's pretty much it do I put too much more in here I don't know let's just suggest one or two things uh, maybe balancing up this shape as well um, sort of trees and, and areas and I could actually there's a little glimmer of light through there so I could actually create a little bit more of that so let's just suggest that we've got some growth in the trees beyond but then we're getting a little bit of sky popping through there and that will make a nice extra shape leading into this height here and so I could actually bring that down so I'm now actually making this up as I go along quite honestly started off with a reference but I've come away from the reference quite happily and I don't mind that something like that let's leave it at that okay so that's all cleaned off now let's go in with a medium round brush and I'm going to go in with a nice green color so for that I'm using Oriolin and a bit of cobalt blue I'm just going to green it up enough to make a very light acidic type green and I'm going to tap it in in areas like where I want the light and I can come back in with darks that's not a problem so I'm going to come down around the uh, area of the um, sheds and I'm going to cool it down actually it could be a bit cooler and that will help make it recede aerially so let's just actually add a little bit of blue into that mix as it comes down very very quickly making a big bold statement of this right from the word go and come in and here you I'm going to leave in I'm going to actually have some other color mixes prepared so let's go for that let's put in a nice magenta or if you've got um, a rose permanent rose or whether you use alizarin crimson karma any of these lovely flowery pinky violets you can add some uh, cobalt um, violet into that and make it a little more bluish so let's come in with some light color first let's just put in a range of these little taps of color and let them sit there as we come down with our green oh I forgot that there's just a little water on there lift that out very very quickly tap off the brush mix some of the more up and a little bit more in terms of the blue as it comes down just adding in and let that play around and mix in with 
these beautiful violets like so. Let it come down the side of the shed. Now I did say there's a bit of white there. I'm going to leave that and let that play around. Add some more of these violets up in here like so. And they don't even correspond uh, totally with all my little bits of um, pen marks that I've made. I'm not, yeah, you know, I really and truly I don't mind. This is merely a scribble, a sketch, a play around, having some fun on a spare piece of paper and just seeing where it takes us. Right now, I did say that I needed to suggest that these are much cooler. Up in here, this is where I'm putting my beans. I'm going to come in with maybe a little bit of Indian yellow to that mix. Just change that color a little bit, like so. I know they're not that color, but it works for me in this regard, like that. And I will tap in while I've got it the able to do. I'm going to put in a little bit of cadmium red because it is a uh, a color that is um, opaque, so it will sort of leave itself and its presence known. There we go. There are beans and flowers all over our bean plant. Bring some of them down through here, making lovely color statements. And let's bring some all the way down into the base here. Don't make it look too much, but just enough. Lift a bit of that off. All right. And come back in with some of our lovely violet colors in here. And the paler one at the top. And I did say there's an awful lot more over here. So I'm going to actually put those in quickly. As fast as I can make them grow. Like so. And one or two areas here where there is something. that Maybe a buddlier. Something I'm not too sure. Um, leave it like that. Lots of colour. Lots of interest. Just make this really work as a nice, warm, summery painting. And it sort of made me feel a bit today. I think there's actually a little red bucket in there. I'm going to stick that in somewhere like that. And let that dry up for a minute or two. And then let's just quickly go back into the roof. Use some of this violet. It's a lovely summer. Sorry, I'm jumping all over the place. Lovely summer's day. And I just made me feel of warm fuzzy feelings it's great to have uh, a lovely warm sun outside no wind good temperatures and no rain or cloud okay let's just come in i'm going to make this a very pale statement i could use a bolder brush but i'm not i'm going to run that down and into there like so and add a little bit of um indigo and a bit of the cooler green so a bit of indigo a little bit of the uh, cobalt blue and make a very cool darkish green color that's what I wanted and I want that in to the edge of the shed like so I bring it all the way down and around there's that lovely shape we're going to leave that for the time being bring that down and around there take it all the way down but much lighter down through the face. This is catching the sun. Didn't look very light, did it? Let's take a lot of water to that. Make that come all the way down. It comes in bits of it you see through here and down the face of the door, like so, into the grasses and whatever there is going on down, going on down there. And let's do the same with this one. Take it all the way through. Lost a bit of the coolness. Let's come back in with that cool colors darker on the side we can actually reinforce that one on this side take that all the way down through there and it doesn't matter if you leave white paper this is just a watercolor sketch it's a pen and ink and to that end it is amazing what you can get away with I'm not saying it's a case of getting away with badly it's just a case of making it nice and flowy and watercolory is that the right word to use? You know what I mean. All right, just moving on very, very quickly. Uh, I used up all that color that I was using in the roof. So I'm gonna mix another little tap just to change that roof color. And it's got, 
this one's a little bluer so I'll put that in and leave it like that just add a little bit into there and leave that to dry up now that's going to run into there I'm not worried about that at all now I want to come in with this brush and I want to come in with the light value green so I'm going to go in again and I'm going to go in with two mixes one I'm using the lemon or oreolin with some cobalt as I did in the first round but this time I'm going to be a little bit more of the oreolin this time I'm going to take out this darker green I'm going to use the same mix but I'm going to actually add in a bit of cerulean and that makes a, a very lively but very acidic green and I'm going to play around with the idea of put it mixing it up a little bit you can see how the uh, difference in that green makes it let's just put this one next to it and you should be able to see a bit of difference between the two and not they're running together so not so evident but it, it is there I'm just going to add in one or two light marks and taps of color as it comes through not losing those lovely areas I'm going to put in red once this is done like so and leaving a lot for the imagination that's the idea leaving lots for the imagination little bits of green through here like so coming on down through against that and obviously I've forgotten that being there I mustn't do that let's come in there with a bit of green and there and there and look at this area too this is actually going to be quite dark so I'm not overly worried if I don't capture all of this in light or whatever because I've got to go over it again with a few more values toward the end of the painting but I do want to leave the areas around my bottle so I'm going to just come in protecting those marks come all the way down through doesn't matter if I go through the what are the posts I come in with a bit more and um, more cerulean excite some of these greens through here you can see now the difference between the adding that cerulean in it does make a big difference to the colors you're seeing coming all the way through here with some of this very simple sort of wash and mark making just it's very suggestive like so let that bleed through let it come on down to the base put some up in here in these areas and before you forget just add some more uh, of these beautiful uh, structural plants butterfly plants as I call them just one or two marks vary the tones vary the amount of color add some more reds some yellows whatever you want to do to make these uh, give you some very pleasant views in terms of the picture like so it doesn't matter I keep saying it doesn't matter if they bleed they are merely suggestions that's all it is just nice and colorful marks add a few reds in and make some real punchy statements for the green red and green of course are complementaries and they work very well that way so very quickly moving on um, I'm going to put some nice Indian yellow plants in. That's a bit corrupted, a bit dirty. Lift that out, clean the brush, come back in with some pure yellows. There you go, that's much better. Just one or two taps of yellow into the whole of the image. Maybe one or two, I think there is some yellow over here. Let's just tap some of that in maybe one or two up in there just give that some nice color variation in the image let them dry up so while we're letting that dry let's go back up to the trees with a smaller brush and let's make a much darker green color so we're going to come in with some indigo this time and a bit of the oreolin and a bit more just turn that to a very drab darkish green and I'm going to use some of these areas that I sketched out merely as indications very big contrasty statement between one green and the other you can soften the edge and make more of it if you wish to but you're actually now painting the shadow area so you're actually painting the um, negative spaces that you would actually see so all the light greens become that which are not in shadow if that's if you get what I'm saying 
Um, basically I'm painting negative space so what you see in light is what's on the surface and what you see dark is merely what you can't see because of the um, light changes. Now what I am doing also is I'm using fairly dry brush in places and allowing some of that now to skip and miss over the rough paper so you get a very fragmented appearance and being protective of the edges so the darkness will throw the shed the sheds out like so make sure that comes all the way along and then just scratch it off like that and give yourself uh, the suggestion of um, the darkness that goes on behind these sheds comes all the way down the face of that one let's draw that in and that isolates that shed really beautifully it just throws the whole thing out let's make a bit more of a mix maybe a little bit more of the blue making it darker in one or two places like so and you can come back over here if you want to add some of that you can do so if you want to reinforce the depth of dark behind these don't forget the paint will dry up much lighter than what you're putting it on at so be aware of that you may want some of these heavier statements and if you don't like so much then just use some damp uh, water well, water is damp isn't it I do apologize I keep saying silly things but you get the idea dampness in the brush and you can just come in and mix some of those away and play around with them so that they sort of blend into nothingness maybe a bit different yellows coming into this and suggest so one or two extra bits and pieces now I didn't put any sky color in we could do and I might just add a little bit clean water just a little bit of cobalt off to one side and just make a very very quick statement with that through there now that's all the paint pigment I want but I'm just it's actually going very green I guess that would happen there's obviously a lot of uh, that blue has got a lot of green in it so I'm going to take that out I'm going to let that bleed down but it gives me a nice sky color moving through there and I'm going to let that simply dry up okay once that's dry we can come back in but in the meantime using the same brush again just come back in and mix it into some of these values bringing them into some of these lovely colors again we're making negative spaces and we can bring them much darker if we need to so we can bring this down from here all the way down through behind this um, jacket or whatever's hanging on there bring one or two darks into here and bring it all the way through to right down the side of the shed if you wish to right so I was going to leave a bit of white bit there but I completely forgot about that never mind um, back up in here let's put in some darks that will throw out those beans and for now I'm going to put in a bit of the green there and a bit of Oriolin making a slightly greenier green and let's just come back in with some of the darks in here and it's softening up where the sky has just been put in not worried it will blend nicely and we can go back in and reinforce anything we want to so let's come in with some darks one or two coming down and carefully as you tap away just leave the suggestion of other things you know let the mind join the dots as it were there you go I think that works quite well and let's take this off over here a bit more water and then we can use the slightly bigger brush if we wish to and take that on and add some more yellows and some more colors into there let that bleed and move and I wanted to put in quite a bit of dark in here that's why I'm trying to do this I want to suggest the depth of dark around this bottle bringing that down through and the same for these other ones but there's a natural dark there bringing some of that into the edges of the beans not obliter obliterating my lovely purple flowers I want to keep those just remember the name Verbena bonarensis or bonacensis, something like that. 
um, a very beautiful structural plant and if you haven't got any in your garden I urge you to get some because the butterflies adore it right so I'm coming through with that bringing that dart all the way down through and it will dissipate as it comes down and don't forget some of these little gaps that are small up the back here as they come closer you need to make them um, bigger because obviously the leaves as they get close to you will become larger the closer they, be they are all right let's come in here with some darts i put a bit of violet to that actually deepen that down nice dart very suggestive like so come back in and some more darts through here got one more um, bottle that I just want to isolate a little bit through the back here mix a bit more color up I'm starting to get a little bit less of it putting a bit of uh, the ultramarine violet to that too it's quite interesting and let that dark come all the way down and leaving some of my yellow flowers don't want to lose those and just having some fun with the brush Hopefully you can see that. And one or two darts across, you don't want them just following certain lines down. You need to have them so that they work. And I'm gonna put some, while well, I've got this on, I'm just gonna suggest one or two darker areas of grasses and growth can put some more in in a moment but just to make a start on it and by leaving again I'm painting negative space so I'm leaving some of the lights beyond that to suggest the blades of grass or whatever these plants are uh, that they are these are the shadow marks that you're seeing and nothing more Like that. All right, we've still got to do one, a few, one or two more I's and T's, as it were, later on. But at the moment, I'm enjoying what's going on. I'm just going to put a little bit more blue to that as it comes down. Like so. I did say this was going to be a quick painting. It's not. So you're going to get a long painting. I don't, it doesn't matter how I do this, I never ever seem to get it as a quick painting. I'm going to put one or two darks in there just to suggest that there's something growing up. Now this is almost like positive space. This is going the reverse direction. Right, so. One or two mid-greens. Let's just put a mid-green value coming in here somewhere. So we just we don't know what we're looking at in terms of what greens are what, but it's all part and parcel of the jumble of these um, allotments. Now I'm becoming to leave a lot of white space because I'm trying to draw in the uh, verbena uh, stems a little bit and maybe one or two marks through here. Not going to see too much. I'm not worried about seeing too much. It's merely a suggestion. Like so. Really scratching it through. There's a lot of dark in the foreground. Let's just add weight to that. Like so. Take that all the way off to the edge. And one or two marks of this fashion, just to suggest that there are grasses and there's something going on here. Nice long strokes. And if you notice what I'm doing is I'm using the base, my little finger, as a bridge action over the paper. So I can use it and get a line that actually stays in that sort of same place all the way through. And therefore I don't end up uh, making a thick or a thin line accordingly. Now I'm using very much dry brush just to pick out one or two areas of dark. I can reinforce any of those darks like in there if I wish to or I can just merely leave the white paper and I come back in with some 
little bit of ultramarine violet and the aureolin. All these blues, whether they be dark blues or whether they be light blues, all the yellows, they all mix together to make some form of green. So use them all. Um, you know, it's not a case, oh, I can't use that, I can use that. It doesn't really matter. Just as long as your green reads about right in terms of whether it's a warm or a cool one, that's all you need it to do. Just going to put in some water through here, a lot more water just to finish that off there, like so. Boom. All right, now we've got, seems to be quite a white arc there. So I'm going to come in with a lot of aureolin just to make it a little fresher. I'm just going to tap one or two bits of lime green, acidic green, into one of these one or two of these places just to fill in some of the white space to make it less obvious that that's what I've done left white. I'm just going to add one or two areas in. And I think you just get this whole idea of lovely punchy colors of a summer thing. Now, one thing I have forgotten to do is let's just put our glads in. Now one, two, and really punchy colors in some of these. Let's put that one in there like so. I don't know what I think they're glad, but whatever they are, they're pretty. So they give a lovely flush of red colors in there. And let's just put in one or two other big statements of red. I'm using, as I said earlier, I'm not using vermilion. I'm actually using cadmium red, which is no paint color. And it just really sets itself up to go wherever. Let's just reinforce one or two of these bean flowers over here. Not too heavy, just one or two, nothing more. Now, I'm leaving the bottles. I could give them a little flush, uh, maybe some cobalt, um, maybe just actually not cobalt. Let's go in with some uh, ultramarine blue, just pure ultramarine blue, nothing big, not a great big sway of it, just a little brush mark down through the center to give them the sense that they are glass and that there's a different cool color they're reflecting. Let's go in with the color of our jacket very, very quickly. And let's make our jacket, um, what color should we make our jacket? Let's go in with actually a bit of that purple that I left in the pan, but now I'm gonna use some Indian red just to give our jacket a different color. Lighten it up like so, and let that come down and let it stay just like that, let it dry first. And while we're letting that dry, one of the last few things we're going to do, we're going to come back in and we're just going to come in underneath with, again, some Indian red, but some indigo makes a delicious dark. And let's just come in with a nice shadow color under our sheds, give them some lovely weight, let that blend all the way out down the side of the shed, like so. Okay, now there's nothing stopping you going back in once that's dry, because it has fused quite a bit. We can, we're going to use the same color into this one too, but this one has got more of a definite shadow. I'm just going to put that in like so and let that disappear down. Let it become less obvious down there, but a definite shape just there. And there are a couple of little marks under the soffit board or whatever you call that part of the shed. Let's just put those in. Now we're giving the whole thing three dimensions. I'm going to put in a little dark top around here and I want to suggest a bit of a shadowy mark on part of this there. And um, maybe, maybe just a little dark mark down the post like so. Doesn't need too much. Um, I haven't done anything over here. I certainly haven't finished off our lovely Wellington boot. And for that, I'm going to use some cobalt turquoise just in our boot, like so, and let that dry very quickly. And I'm going to use the same, pretty much the same color up on this. I don't know what it is. As I said, I think it's somewhere that somebody overwinters plants or gets them hardened off. It's like a portable lean to greenhouse type thing, which I suspect is exactly what it is. But I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to bring it on down through here, like so, and let it set itself up there. Let it dry and just put one or two bits of dark detail in. Yes, dark detail. And um, 
leave that to dry and finish off. We're pretty much there. There's not a lot to do. Just going to re-establish a bit more dark under there on the eave, like so. As that goes away, that works. And when that's dry, I can put the darker parts in there and leave one or two light parts. Now, I just want to come in with the shape of the boot just in here. I've got to be careful. I think this is going to bleed and work against me if I'm not careful. But there we go. Little shape of the boot and a little bit of warmth on the post. So I'm going to put the post base in and put the post down like so. Maybe a little darker and then down through there like that. Nice post and a bit of a table. We're going to leave that like that and we're pretty much done. Okay, I really want to get this finished and to wait for this is going to work against me. So I'm just going to come in with the dark area around here. It isolates that bucket so we can put that in like so. And I'm going to bring it around to a shape like so and let that come down like that and I'm gonna try and lift off actually because I've used a very very similar value I want to try and lift out the Wellington boot just a bit now I really have got to let that dry before I proceed okay all dried all ready to crack on and just finish this off so I'm coming in with a really dark I'm using indigo and I want to come in with some uh, indigo actually and some transparent orange I haven't used that at all, but they make a very warm dark. So let's just come in and let's just be a little creative here to suggest that there is other stuff going on. Maybe leave the odd little bit of light, but let's get that boot isolated. That's what I was aiming to do is isolate the woolly, bring that down through there and we get the Wellington shape. It's not very good. Not as good as I'd liked it to have been, but there you go. And put that dart through there, and that will make those legs stand out. And also bring that down under here like so, and make that leg stand out also. And get the edge of whatever that is, and maybe a little bit of negative space as it disappears down into some of these flowers and the yellows there. All right, enough is enough. I've enjoyed that, let that dry off, and let's just put in uh, maybe the handle of a bucket light so we know what we're looking at, and leave it in that fashion. Now, what I might just do is lift a couple little areas in here just to break up the sense of all one value. Just lifting it slightly so almost like you can see into the space and maybe underneath the table too. Just using a little bit of a thing there to make that happen. Right, very last part. We've done all of this. I just need to do something about these trees in the background. There's quite a lot of dark. So let's just come in and using my semi-tight rigger type brush is just, just put in one or two marks that suggest that these trees are going off and are creating lovely shapes and forms into the background like so loosely done following most of my lines but if i miss a few i'm not overly worried about it but they then come down and form all sorts of lovely things and that rigor just springs and, and hits the paper in different ways and creates new shapes and forms like this and it works very very well to that regard like that. Maybe one or two up through the back there. And let's bring one, two heavier ones through. Like so. Across, down, joint there. Much bigger tree. There you go. I think that's enough. You can keep on and on and on. I'm just going to bring that there like so there we are 
Okay, we're done. Okay, so we got there in the end. I do apologize. It was meant to be a faster video than this and they never seem to be so. As hard as I try, so I can only apologize one more time. I will get a quick one out there one day, I'm sure. But I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have done, then give this a thumbs up. I've certainly enjoyed painting it for you. It was a lot of fun. It was just a scribble. I took my sort of scribbles out of my sketchbook and sort of just recreated it on a little bit of paper that I had lying around. So you can do very much the same thing. It's just a bit of fun. Lots of colour, lots of summer, lots of light, lots of warmth and reminiscent of today. Um, what I would also say that if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. It costs you nothing to do that, but it really does help me as an artist and a channel content creator to grow my channel and that I'm working very very hard to do so your support would really help me by liking sharing commenting and above all subscribing to my channel really does help me out I can't thank you enough in advance if you would kindly do that for me so with that all said um, I'm going to move on to my next painting and my next uh, video for you which will be out next Friday in the meantime, just a little bit of added news. Each week, each and every week now, I've actually got the um, I got my head round doing live streaming, and so for the last couple of weeks, I have been doing live streams on my channel. Now they are going to be two a week, and they will be every Monday evening and every Friday evening at 7 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. So if you're interested in watching me and interacting with me through the chat, then please hop in, have a look, say hi, watch the video, enjoy the painting process and my thoughts as I do them. Every Monday is going to be a, if I get this right, it's going to be a watercolour I think on a Monday and an oil or another media on a Friday. No, it's actually it's the wrong way around. I actually mean it's going to be a watercolour on a Friday and oil or another type of medium on a Monday. Whichever. You're going to get two a week. Enjoy them. Jump on in and interact with me and enjoy the painting along with me as I create it for you in real time. So I'd love to see a few of you uh, coming on board. Let me know that you've come on from this video even. Just let me know how you've come across the channel. But above all, please subscribe to the channel. That, I can't say, helps me enough. And if you still want a bit more, then take a look at my Patreon page. That's being added to all the time. And there is actually a new tier on there while we are locked down, certainly, and beyond this time. But it's certainly designed that if people want to have direct contact with me, uh, then they can do and all they got to do is go into that look at the right tier get involved with that and we have one-to-one -one conferencing each month to help you directly with work you're working on so that might be worth or certainly worth a look at and of interest for a few of you in the meantime I've just got to say thanks for watching this thanks for putting up with me again <laughs> and I see each and every one of you next Friday or next Friday evening, or next Monday evening. Whichever, I look forward to your company. Take care, happy painting, stay safe, stay distant. Catch you all soon. Bye-bye.